Hi and welcome back. Now we're ready to calculate EMSR protection levels using Littlewood's rule. So let me write Littlewood's rule up here so we have it to refer to. I've already gone ahead and copied it onto the clipboard. Let me give myself just a little bit more room here. And notice I've changed the notation just a little bit so that it refers to this column here. So we're first going to calculate the protection levels for this column. So the subscripts here, fair for, this is the fair for class four, so for this class, and this subscript's not going to change. We're gonna iterate through the J's. So we're gonna calculate our first protection level for fair class four against three, so J will equal three. Then we'll calculate a protection level for class four against two, so J will equal two. And then finally for class four against one, so J will equal one and we'll have three different protection levels, and then we'll sum those up and we'll have our first EMSR protection level for this set of classes, three and above. So let's start calculating our first protection level. We're gonna say J equals three, so we're gonna calculate the protection level for class four against three. So there's one unknown in this equation, theta, and we have two knowns, fair four and four, fair three. So let me go ahead and write those in. And I, I find that if I pause and take my time to write these things, my penmanship is a lot better. So that's why I do that. So on the left-hand side, we have fair four, which is $125. And then fair three, which is $290. So now we have to solve for theta. That's our decision variable. We have to choose the theta, the protection level, that makes the right-hand side, which is the expected marginal seat revenue, equal to the left-hand side. So in other words, we need to choose how many seats to protect for fair class three customers at 290 so those seats don't get sold to $125 customers. So to find this expected value, we need to find this probability, and we're going to use the normal probability functions to do that because we have assumed that demand follows the normal distribution. And that will give us the expected value. We'll multiply this probability times this fair. That will, be, that will give us the expected value for the last seat that we protect, the, the theta seat, or if, it, if theta is seven, then the seventh seat. So remember, it's not the expected value of all the seats you protect, it's the expected value of the last seat protected. Another way to think of this is, it's the additional revenue an airline could expect to receive by increasing the protection level by one seat. So if they increase the protection level by one seat, the probability that that seat will be sold will give them the expected value of that seat. Then that leads to their decision. If the expected value from protecting one more seat is greater than the $125 from the lower fare class, then they should protect an additional seat. If the expected value from protecting an additional seat is less than the 125, then they should protect no more additional seats. Now, there are a couple of ways to calculate this probability. There are tables in the back of statistics books. If you were writing a computer program, there are functions that return these probabilities. We're going to use Excel and use the built-in functions uh, in Excel. So let me go find that sheet that I created. Here's my Excel sheet. I've copied just the portion of the blackboard we were using right onto the sheet. And then below there in the cells here, I just copied down some information. So on the left-hand side, we have fair four at $125, then fair three at $290. And then I just copied over the mean and standard deviation of the demand forecast. And we're going to use these parameters of the normal distribution to find this uh, probability. If you remember from the earlier videos, this probability statement is something called the survivor function right here. We need to calculate the probability from the survivor function. The way you do that is you first calculate the probability from the cumulative distribution function, the CDF, which may be more familiar to you than the survivor function. 
The survivor function is then just the complement of the CDF. It's one minus the CDF. Now Excel doesn't have a function for the survivor function, but it does for the CDF. And if you look up here, you can see exactly what the function is. You, um, the name of the function is norm dist, and then you plug in some x value. Our x value will be theta and then the mean and standard deviation and this this true just means uh, return the probability from the cdf once you get that probability you take one minus so up here i'm just taking one minus the probability from the cdf and that is the probability from my survivor function so uh let me take a different example here say theta equals one the probability from the cumulative distribution function is 0 0.0012 1 minus that is 0 0.9988 so the expected value or the expected marginal seat revenue from that first seat is 0 0.9988 multiplied by 290 and that is an expected value of $289.66 so what I've created here is a lookup table. I just started at zero, so a protection level of zero, and I just chose 0.25 increments, and I just chose a very long list so I'd have a wide range. And the way I use this to find my protection levels is I choose the theta that makes this equation. So in other words, I want to find this, the theta that makes this EMSR equal to $125. So I simply go down my column here of EMSR values and find where it is equal to $125. Then I simply read across and I find the theta and that is the protection level. So let's uh, scroll down here. Let's see how far we have to go. And 125.47 is close enough to $125. So when theta equals tw uh, 37, the expected marginal seat revenue from the 37th seat equals 125, which is the same as the left-hand side, which is the fare from fare class 4. So that is our answer. That is our first protection level. So we can go and write that over on the blackboard. Back on the blackboard, we can enter our first protection level of 37. So we're going to protect 37 seats for the $290 fare uh, customer so that those seats don't get sold at $125. Now we can iterate J from 3 to 2 and calculate the protection level for class 4 against fare 2. So let's take our uh, next set of parameters, copy them over to the Excel sheet, and calculate this protection level. I've copied over the fare for class 2 at $420. And by the way, I just noticed that this said fare 2 when we were doing the previous example. It should have been fare 3 here. Uh, on the left-hand side, the $125 uh, doesn't change. And then I copied over the mean and standard deviation of demand for class 2. Now let's use the same procedure to find the theta that makes this expected marginal seat revenue equal to 125. So again, we're looking for 125, just like in the last example. So let's scroll down our spreadsheet here, look for 125, and there it is. So the theta that corresponds to an EMSR of 125 is 52.25. So we're going to protect 52.25 seats for our fair class 2. So those seats don't get sold at $125. So again, that's, that's saying that we're going to protect the, the or the expected value from the 52 52nd seat we would just take the integer portion of that the expected value of protecting the 52nd seat is going to be $125 to make this equation hold so let's go write 52.25 on our blackboard so we'll write that here 52.25 okay and now we have one more to do for this set of protection levels. We just copy over our 
parameters for fair class one, $500, and then these two demand statistics. So again, the 125 doesn't change. Fair, fair for class, excuse me, the fair for fair class one is $500, the mean and standard deviation, and then we can quickly find our theta. So again, we're looking for EMSR of 125, and ooh, it came quick. There it is. So we're going to protect 20 point, going too fast, 20.25 seats for uh, fair class one. So the expected value of the 20th seat is going to be equal to 125. So that's our last set of protections. We're going to enter that here, 20.25. So now we're ready to sum these protection levels together, and that will be the EMSR protection level for classes three, two, and one. So as the we assume the, uh, the lower fare customers request seats first, as the customers request $125 seats, we're going to protect this number of seats uh, uh, for the higher classes. So let's, uh, let me get my calculator. So that's 20.25 plus 52.25 plus 37 equals 109. And we're just going to take the integer portion of that and let's write that down here. So we're going to protect 109 seats for classes three and above. And we'll calculate the remaining protection levels in the next video.